All of our viewers are drowning now in the dynamics of our economic world. How do we get control of it? It has to do its job, get inflation down. Uh, it's the institution with unique uh, control over monetary conditions in the United States. Um, together with the fiscal authorities, uh, they drive inflation. And the Fed's got to do its job now uh, and uh, do what it takes to get inflation down. I think uh, Chairman Powell has been right in recent months uh, since March uh, to emphasize that maximum employment is going to be out of reach until we get inflation down. And we need to put uh, concerns about the labor market uh, and what it's doing a, a little bit to the side and focus on getting inflation down. That's going to take reducing spending growth, right. reducing nominal spend. And um, the labor market will play out as it will. Your shop codified economic history with Thomas Humphreys, one of my heroes. I've read every single page he's ever written. Right now, Thomas, Thomas Humphreys would be writing about comparing Volcker to Powell, Powell to Volcker. He's not Paul Volcker, right? So uh, Paul Volcker was a, um, a great central banker in an age of... Uh, monetary mystique, an age in which central banks deliberately cultivated some obscurity and a distance from the public. Uh, they didn't want to be in the headlines unless, you know, they wanted to choose when they'd be in the headlines. Um, we're in a different day and age. Getting inflation down revealed to central bankers around the world uh, the value of um, managing expectations and the value to that of being transparent and communicating about what they're about, what they're trying to do. Uh, Jay Powell's See, strikes me as better suited for the age of central bank transparency than Paul Volcker in terms of personal demeanor. Uh, the one uh, big thing that Paul Volcker had was uh, the political, the backing of the political establishment in Washington and New York to get inflation down. They were fed up with it and they were willing to take the pain. And he cultivated an appreciation of the pain that was needed uh, to, to, to withstand in order to get inflation down. And I think Jay Powell is uh, seems to have uh, abundant um, political connections and uh, abundant skill in managing the Fed's political uh, connections. And so he, he seems pretty well suited on that grounds too. Jeffrey, this I is think, a delicate subject, but you've touched on it. Mm -hmm. So let's go there. How political is this Fed right now? Uh, so I think they understand that um, there's nothing that could damage their credibility more than sustained inflation. Um, you know, they can take all the hits they want on, on employment and the labor force and climate change and, and uh, what have you. But uh, job number one is inflation. If they don't get that down, I think they're, they realize they're, they're political toast in some sense. So um, I think that's true of every, any Fed, no matter what people say about independence. I think it's true of every Fed. Are you convinced they're willing to tolerate a recession to get inflation I down? Think, yes, I do. And they should. Jeff, what kind of recession? Because the consensus right now is short and shallow. Do you share that, let's say, more constructive view of things? I, I'm tempted, given today's news, yesterday's news, to say a Mario Draghi recession, you know, whatever it takes. Um, because the, the, um, the alternative uh, to let your foot up off the brake before inflation has come down, let it settle 4 and 5%, that's just a recipe for another recession down the road. That's a recession for prolonged pain, making the agony longer and longer, stretching out over years. That's not good for the American public. I think they realize that. So they're going to have to, they ought to, what they ought to do is stick with it until they get inflation down to under 3%, say, uh, within spinning distance of two. Okay. And um, go from there. Okay, so whatever it takes, what is it going to take? What rate on Fed funds? What rate on unemployment? Good question. So um, I think the historical record is clear that they need to get the real federal funds rate at or above zero. Uh, so that begs the question, right? So the real rate is the actual funds, funds, Fed funds rate minus expected near-term inflation. Are the best reads of that are about 6%. You've got the Michigan survey at 5.2, the New York Fed consumer survey, which is great, very good um, methodology. At 6.8, split the difference at 6%. If near-term expectations of inflation stay at 6%, they're going to have to get there. If those near-term expectations start falling, then what we have in store is a rendezvous between the Fed funds rate and uh, expected inflation. 
Uh, but I, I doubt that expected expectations are going to fall to three and a half or four by year end. So I suspect they're going to have to go higher than that. And how quickly would they need to get there? I mean, 6% is still a long way away, even with the supersized hikes we've already seen. I don't think the, um, I don't think slowing down the process does them a lot of good. Um, no matter what, whether they go, you know, 50s or 75s, they're still going to be in a situation where the effect on inflation is out into next year. They're going to have to make a judgment about when to stop without knowing whether they've done enough of or not. Um, based on other indications and other calculations, like the one I, I cited. Um, and uh, so it, it, they might as well get get it done. Uh, they might as well get there fast. Jeff, do you look at the path back from this inflation to whatever's normal, 2 3%, let's not get into that now, is having a smoothness, a glide path, as Peter Orzag would call it, or is it kinked where we get to a point, we stop, we try to figure out how to lower inflation next, et cetera. You know, if the, if the Fed tightens enough, I think we'll just see a gradual decline down. I think it'll sag over a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I expect it to be relatively smooth. I don't have any reason to sure. expect any jolts. Absent other shocks, like more oil price um, problems and the like. Jeff, how would they respond, do you think, to that negative supply shock on the energy side? I'm, I'm interested in that, not just for the Federal Reserve, but maybe more so for the ECB on the gas side of things. I don't know if you followed that news yeah. conference yesterday with the Guard, but I think we all failed to establish what their reaction function actually yeah. is and how they'd respond to a negative supply shock that pushed gas prices higher and potentially growth lower. This is a murky area. Because uh, oil price shocks tend to cause unemployment, people think, well, you need to ease, that's a reason to ease policy. But if you think about it more broadly, the, the central bank's controlling the real interest rate, which is the incentive to save and delay consumption, delay spending to later. And if you get a supply shock, you want people to wait and consume later. So what you want to do is raise rates, uh, at least one argument goes. So there's a case that, you know, it doesn't it doesn't mean uh, not staying the course on inflation.